The people have spoken, and it may have been close, but Hapatra was the clear winner. First off, thanks to everyone who participated in the You Choose the Brew video series. It turned out to be a very fun way to communicate with the MTG community and help spread the word about the Top Deck Hero $50 giveaway. Now before we go any further, I have one last huge thank you for Charles and everyone over at Top Tech Hero for their support throughout the, this and the last contest, and of course congratulations to whoever won. Now it's fair to say that there are already a lot of Apatra themed decks out there. Dev from SBMGT and Matt from Total MTG have some pretty sweet brews. Now I know that if I mention Matt from Total MTG one more time, people are going to think that I have those special feelings that are best left unsaid about him. But I want it to be stated for the record that I have those unspoken feelings for one man and one man only. No, Ryan Reynolds! What? You can't tell me you don't think he's a pretty cool guy in real life. Plus, he did an episode of X-Files in the 90s which gives him like old school Canadian credit. Alright, enough about street smart sexy Ryan Reynolds, let's get down to the deck. I'm Travis from Brain Pulp TV, and this is Hapatra's Venom. So by the numbers, Hapatra, Visor of Poisons, is a 2-2 human cleric for 2 mana, 1 black, 1 green. Wait, she's a bear? I told you I ain't a bear! Roar, roar, roar. <laughs> no one understands you, she bear. <laughs> okay, she has two very relevant abilities which make her definitely not a bear. First off, whenever she deals combat damage to a player, you get to put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Secondly, whenever you put a minus one, minus one counter on a creature, you get to create a one, one creature token with death touch. That token is a snake. Snake, snake, snake. Anyway, there are a lot of great suggestions in the comment section. One of the more intriguing ones actually was by Luke Green who suggested I bug out and try playing a little more control. Now blue's not necessarily my thing, but I am excited to see Essence Scatter in Standard. I mean, can you imagine playing Essence Scatter against Essence Depleter? Ew, talk about a mess. However, seeing as this is a budget build and running three colors is a little out of my comfort zone, I chose to get down with the sickness and build a straight up Golgari deck. Now a lot of other decks out there for Hapatra seem to feature a lot of discard and cycling sub-themes, but since I wanted this one to be a little bit different, I chose to focus on one thing and one thing only. Developers, 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 developers. Actually, I was thinking more along the lines of counters, specifically minus one, minus one counters. Developers, developers, developers. Counters, counters, counters. Developers, developers, developers. You know what, I'm just going to stop this right here because I feel I'm not going to win with this guy. So going with the minus one minus one counter theme, we will begin with a playset of Hapatra. Yep, all four. And only three of the Nest of Scarabs. Now four Hapatras, that's a lot for a legendary creature, but since she needs to do combat damage to a player to double dip her ability, she's going to be blocked a lot. And since she has only two toughness, she's going to be dying a lot. I might consider swapping out the fourth copy of Hapatra with a Wander in Death. It will allow us to bring her back along with a friend from the graveyard, but I think I'll stick that in the sideboard to begin with. And yeah, just the three copies of Nest of Scarabs. I like having a backup plan for the main focus of the deck. Kind of like with my token deck, if I don't see a copy of Impact Tremors, I'll hopefully see a copy of Intangible Virtue to give me another win condition. We'll also feature a full playset of the Channeler Initiate. He is surprisingly budget and a great fit allowing for many options. Ramp, Counter Collector, and just a plain old creature. I only have two of the Festering Mummy. Now he's good, but hopefully we'll be seeing a lot of 1-1 creatures for free, so paying mana for one seems a little wasteful. But again, I do like him. And make no mistake, he's a 1-1 that can trade with a 2-2 in combat. And goes with our counter theme. We will, however, have a full playset of the Baleful Amet. He can very easily be a 4-3 with lifelink for only 3 mana. I played with this guy in the Liliana Planewalker deck and was very happy with his performance there. Lifelink may be the most frustrating ability to play against, in my opinion. I will only run a 3 of the Crocodile the Crossing. A big bad hasty guy is a nice change of pace in this deck. It almost made me want to go with more of an aggro theme and find room for the Morn Willow in this deck, but there's just no mass synergy with Delirium, so I opted out of that plan. Crocodile the Crossing, though, goes great with the counters theme. And we will round out the creatures with a 2 of the Decimator Beetle. More counter dropping and transferring shenanigans, plus a 4 5 body for 5 mana, which is not terrible. So there's our main board creatures, we will move on to enchantments. We have already mentioned the Nest of Scarabs, lots of buggy fun to be had there. To go along with that, we'll also have four of the Trial of Ambition, two of the Cartouche of Ambition, and two of the Cartouche of Strength. Basically, I'm exchanging the Mild Cycling sub-theme with a Trial Cartouche sub-theme. Why? Because the heart wants what the heart wants. Blue-white decks usually get to have all the fun playing the Return to Hand and the Battlefield effects, so it's kind of nice to let the Golgari have a chance. 
With a cartouche of strength, you can fight, and with a baleful amet, you're double dipping on the lifelink potentially. But with the trample, you may be helping Hapatra swing through for some actual combat damage and getting her second ability going. Ooh, it's so tough to choose between the two. Moving on to strictly spells, we have four of Splendid Agony. Arguably not the greatest removal, especially at three mana. But in this deck, it can also create a 1 1 death touch block or instant speed if a patch is in play. Sometimes killing other creatures just isn't enough, though, we'll also want to protect our creatures as well. Two of Hepatra's Mark works to protect our creatures and potentially remove counters from them. We'll also have some sideboard options for this card that we'll go over later. Finally, a copy each of Alter's Reap and Rishkar's Elite. Alter's Reap will be nice as we'll have some tokens to sack, and at instant speed, we can hopefully even sack a Hepatra. Well, that's tough to say. If someone targets her for removal, then we have no other answers. Now, Rishkar's Elite is a bit of a tough call. 6 mana, but if you have the Chandler Initiate in play, we can potentially cast it for only 5 mana. And if it's the last counter we're removing from the Initiate, right there we have 3 cards to draw, and we get to cast a 5 mana costed spell. Hello, Decimator Beetle. I have yet to get to play one of these buy one get one free spells from Kaladesh, and I was going to include a playset of Kari Zev's expertise if I built a deck around Kari Zev. And not just for the art and flavor, but because it's actually a pretty good card. So Rishkar's expertise will be a consolation prize there. Seems like it might also be good for my commander deck too. On to lands now. Now at this point we're basically hovering around a $20 budget. So you can almost toss in basic lands and you have a decent deck right there. With multiple win conditions, multiple synergies, 9 to 10 rares. Even using two of Grassman Dunes does not affect the budget much and they too synergize nicely with this deck. So you don't really need to add any fancy lands. Having said that and having a budget, you could add some of the Blooming Marsh, or even a Westfell Abbey, as you will likely have a bunch of tokens that can also be used as win condition on its own. Ultimately, I went with 1 Westfell Abbey, 3 Blooming Marsh, 2 Grasping Dunes, 8 Forest, and 8 Swamps. Moving on to the sideboard, we will have 2 Bone Pickers. In case we run into Flyers, it's a really good card straight up. It just... it doesn't have any mass synergy with minus 1, minus 1 counter theme, so that's why it isn't in the main deck. For Flyers, we also, of course, have 2 of Stinging Shot. Crazy flyer hate. And of course, goes great with the counter theme. We have two of Heroic Intervention. I feel I might want more Hexproof. I don't know why. Two Wandering Death. An additional copy each of the two Cartouches. Two Natural Straight in case someone else is running Cartouches. As well as two more Alters Reap and a Haze of Pollen. Haze of Pollen is a tough call, but it can obviously be handy and the cycling is nice, but sometimes fogs. Meh. The overall sideboard seems kind of messy. I don't know, maybe I should stick with just Shred Weakness or Destined Lead. I think this is where I might need a little help. This video will likely air before Ed and I actually play these decks, so feel free to comment some better sideboard suggestions. Or better suggestions to the deck at all. Even the lands. So there's my minus one minus one counter theme to Patra's Venom deck. Thanks to everyone who commented in the You Choose a Brew deck series, and, and thanks to everyone who entered in the $50 giveaway. And of course, thanks to Top Deck Hero. Make sure to watch out for a future Mana Cave where I'll be playing this deck against Ed's Champion Ronas deck. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching all of our Brain Pulp stuff, and we'll see you again.